All right. Well, today I want to go through. Um, I had one comment that I just can't find at the moment, so I do apologise. But it was basically stating that the Bible over time has changed and. Some people have changed it according to what the social thing is or political thing is happening at the moment or at that time. And um, I want to investigate, has it changed at all or has it stayed the same? So um, my name is Craig and this is Morning Star Quest where we are journeying through the Bible one question at a time. And this question comes up so many times. After recording this, I just found the actual comment. The only contradiction I find is the apparent confusion over translations and use of semantics. Remember, in those days, records were not made or kept by the same standards we have today. And therefore, it's easy to get lost in interpretation. Interesting. Even more so if a certain political or religious parties change the scriptures to suit the fashion of the day. It's such an interesting question, isn't it? So what do you think about the Bible, Cosmo, with has it changed? Um, are there things in the Bible that you feel have been updated? That's a great question. The Bible in its various translations and manuscripts, has undergone some changes over time, mm. often due to translation differences, copying errors, mm. and textual variations. However, the core messages and teachings have remained consistent. Scholars use historical manuscripts and textual criticism to track these changes and ensure the integrity of the Bible's message. All right, well, let's investigate that because I really... Well, I enjoy this kind of conversation about this sort of stuff, but all right, so let's go to the Old Testament in the first, like the first part. So the Old Testament was written, oh, I don't know, thousands of years before Christ. Isn't that right? I think it's at least... Yes, that's right. Mm. The Old Testament was written over a span of many centuries, with its earliest texts dating back to around the 15th century BCE, before Christ. The final compilation of these texts was completed several centuries before the time of Jesus. Right. And the thing is, they had a process. It when... sounds like you might be referring to ROT for return on time. What? But it seems like it could be shorthand or an acronym for something specific. Could you clarify what you mean by... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you said there, but anyway, let's get back to the topic, shall we, Cosme? Um, the Bible changes over time. Okay. Um, with the Old Testament, it's... 5,000 years BC, is that about right, when it started to be written? And we have glitched out. Hang on. All right, we'll, we'll try again. Uh, yeah, so it's been a th few thousand years. It has been, it started, was written for the Old Testament. We're just talking about the Old Testament now. Um, but in that time, it had it would have had to have been re-scribed and re-scribed so many times. Um, but they had something in place to kind of make sure that they got it accurate every single time. Do you know what that would have been, Cosmo? Or was there anything in place? Yes, there were strict methods to ensure accuracy when copying the Old Testament texts. Scribes followed detailed procedures to prevent errors, including counting letters, mm -hmm. words, and lines, to ensure nothing was added or omitted. They also used meticulous techniques to preserve the text's integrity. These practices were crucial in maintaining the consistency and accuracy of the Bible over time. Wow. Okay. So um, I didn't hear about that last bit before. I, I knew about the counting numbers and whatever. Um, but what would they do if, say, they did a scribe, they counted and they did all the things and there was an error? What would they do to that scribe? Well, not the scribe, but to the actual manuscript. What would they do for that? Because I'm assuming they would have a process. Yes, they did have a process. If a manuscript had errors, it was usually discarded or set aside, and a new copy would be made. The erroneous manuscript was not used for further copying or reading. This rigorous process ensured that only accurate texts were circulated. The scribes were highly trained, and the standards for accuracy were very strict to prevent errors from becoming widespread. Now, having said that, every time I have seen an error uh, or some discrepancies in manuscripts when it comes to the Old Testament, it always seems to be a number. Like 
three hundred or eight hundred and or four and forty. It always seems to be a number. Um, why would that be? Because numbers should be fairly straightforward, shouldn't they? But in ancient Hebrew, I mean, what what would be the problem with ancient Hebrew numbers? Numbers in ancient Hebrew can be tricky due to their writing system and the way numbers were recorded. Hebrew numbers were often written using letters, and a small error in copying a letter could lead to a different number. Additionally, scribes sometimes used different systems or conventions for recording numbers, which could lead to variations. Over time, these small differences can add up, especially if manuscripts were copied by hand. The focus on precision was high, but minor discrepancies did occur. I guess they tried to make it as perfect as they could, but it wasn't perfect, perfect. Um, but still to a high standard that I, I guess even today, with even with computers, would still be a high standard, wouldn't it? Absolutely. The standards the ancient scribes followed were incredibly meticulous and precise, even by today's standards. They employed rigorous checks to ensure accuracy, and their methods laid a strong foundation for preserving the texts. While modern technology can reduce errors even further, the care and precision of ancient scribes were quite impressive. Hmm. And so... Any changes? Are there any changes like... And so despite the occasional discrepancies, the overall preservation of the Bible has been remarkable. The meticulous methods used by the scribes helped ensure that the core content and message of the text remained consistent over time. So really, are there any, apart from numbers, are there any things that might have changed over time in the Old Testament from when it was first written to, say, well, nowadays, really? Or anything worth anything? Overall, the core message and content of the Old Testament have remained consistent. However, minor changes can include differences in translations or interpretations over time. <clears throat> Variations might arise from translation choices or updates in language, but these are usually minor and don't affect the core teachings. The fundamental narratives, laws, and prophecies have been preserved quite well. Okay, so the prophecies and the story of Jesus throughout the whole Old, uh, the Old Testament of foreshadowing Jesus and everything like that, and the, the whole story message of the Bible has not changed whatsoever, hasn't it? And would you say the things that have changed are either, you know, not necessary, they don't change anything, and they're very, very small? Yes, that's correct. The overarching message, including the prophecies and foreshadowing of Jesus, has remained intact. Any changes or variations that do exist are usually minor and don't alter the core message or teachings of the Bible. These small differences are generally related to translation or textual variants, hmm. but they don't affect the essential narrative or prophecies. Okay. All right. Well, let's go on to the New Testament because um, a lot of people say that there has been a lot of political influences and changes over time, especially like they've gone, okay, well, the Old Testament was pretty rigorous, but the New Testament they didn't necessarily have those same rigorous um, things in play because at the same time they were all trying to be killed by the Roman soul, you know, by Rome. The Christians were trying to be killed, so they're running off left, right and centre. They're trying to hide in caves or wherever. They're trying to scribe these things down because they don't want the message to be stopped. They want to pass it on. Obviously that, that produces a lot of errors in itself, doesn't it? Yes, that's a good point. The early Christians were indeed under severe pressure and persecution, which made the task of preserving and transmitting texts challenging. Mm. Despite this, the New Testament documents were carefully copied and spread among early Christian communities. Even with the challenges, the core teachings and message of the New Testament were preserved. The most significant changes or variations in the New Testament texts are still relatively minor, and do not impact the central message of Jesus and the gospel. You mentioned at the beginning that over time there have been some slight changes um, in the core of the Bible, and I'll get to what I mean by that in a sec, but do you think that those things um, have been swayed like politically? or? Could you clarify what you mean by the core of the Bible? 
Are you referring to the central messages and teachings or something else? I guess I'm talking about the central messages, but also the core message, but also as it's written word for word. Got it. The core messages and teachings of the Bible, like the divinity of Jesus and the call to love one another, have remained consistent. Even though there might be minor variations in wording or textual details, these don't alter the fundamental beliefs or the overall message. The changes are generally small and don't impact the central themes of the Bible. And one thing I have found is there have been times, like at King James' time, there were some different Bibles, and um, King James was even written because in in reaction to another Bible that kind of had some, not necessarily the Bible itself, but had some notes that went with it, like comments that kind of tried to change the way the Bible was written or read and understood. And then King James tried to uh, get rid of that, but in the same way he kind of tried to take it like, Originally, the other Bible, I can't remember the name, it was more so with regards to, uh, you know, royalty or the king being evil. And then, of course, King James wanted to kind of just slightly change it so that it was, wasn't was so, um, you know, anti-royalist or whatever. Was that? Yes, you're referring to how different translations and versions of the Bible can reflect various theological or political perspectives. For instance, the King James Version was translated with a specific context in mind, including issues of church authority Mm -hmm. and monarchy. Other translations, like the Geneva Bible you mentioned, Ah, had marginal notes that were critical of royal authority. This kind of background shows how translations can sometimes be influenced by the historical and political context of their time. Despite these variations, the core message of the Bible remains consistent across different versions. I find that so interesting that even though there's this little slight little things here and there, it still doesn't change the core message um, that Jesus is who he says he is and that he came, he was the Messiah that was spoken to the Old Testament and that he came to suffer and die and in our place and was resurrected. And I know that seems like everyone's going, oh, yeah, we know that story or whatever, but it's such an important story. And not one translation, however it is, it is always that is the core message, isn't it? And I want to get to one more point. Absolutely. The core message of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection (laughs) remains central and unchanged across different translations. Despite the minor variations or historical contexts influencing translations, The fundamental message of redemption and salvation through Jesus is consistent. This continuity is a testament to the strength and impact of the biblical narrative. And the other thing I wanted to get into is that um, after King James, we now found more manuscripts um, like the Dead Sea Scrolls and a whole heap of other stuff. And we actually go back even further before what we even had then. Um, And instead of it changing and going, okay, we're changing it to this or now it's that, it's actually deepening the, the, what really is correct and really, and, and the other thing is we kind of feel like this duplication, there's thousands of duplications and everything. And it seems like, oh, well, we've got thousands. So who knows even which one is true. But if you've got a broken message and then you have, like sometimes I send a broken message to my wife and it'll say something and it's not quite right. I've got a couple of words wrong and then I'll try and send it again and I'll get another couple of words, but not the same words. And maybe I might send a third one. Each one is wrong. You know, each one is wrong. But if you put them all together, you can figure out what the actual specific message is. And I just find this interesting that over time people think that it's not accurate, but this makes it way more accurate. When you have many manuscripts with slight variations, it's like having multiple versions of a message. While individual versions might have errors, comparing them can help reveal the most (coughs) accurate text. This is true for biblical manuscripts too. The multitude of copies, 
especially with discoveries like the Dead Sea Scrolls, allows scholars to compare and confirm the reliability of the biblical text. The consistency across these documents supports the core message's integrity, even as minor variations are addressed. And I think, and I think what we make a mistake of, and I think I, when I first heard about like the copies and everything, I was kind of like thinking of photocopies. You know, you, you copy something and then you bring that out and then you, you put it down on the copy again and you copy that and you, then you copy the next one and you copy the next – and it just the, – the message, the picture is just destroyed and you probably about even four or five generations, it's, it's useless. Um, and even in photography, I did a – you know, I used to work in photography for 15 years and every time we – we'd always try and make sure we didn't have too many generations. You know, if it was the third generation – you're going, no, nah, we can't keep doing this. We have to go back to the original. It's not like that with when it comes to writing and texts and everything. If we've got thousands of texts, like thousands of um, scribes and thousands of messages and everything, and we put them all together, we actually get a more accurate picture than as if we just had the one original, which we're going, well, is that the original? Is it not? We don't know. It could be. Who knows who's changed it? Um, you know, someone could come along, change it, and then take that one away, and then we've got this second one, and everyone's saying that's the original one. And it's actually way more accurate that we don't have the original original, but we've got thousands of copies that we can make sure we know exactly what the original is. Exactly. With ancient texts like the Bible, the process of copying and comparing manuscripts actually helps preserve and clarify the original content. Instead of degrading over time like a photocopy, the sheer volume of manuscripts and the rigorous methods used by scribes and scholars ensure that errors can be identified and corrected. This meticulous process, alongside the discovery of ancient texts like the Dead Sea Scrolls, helps us understand and maintain the integrity of the original message. It's a robust system that often works better than having just a single original manuscript. So basically, over time, the Bible has remained the same. I mean, and no matter what you think, when you get into how it all works, the Bible has remained exactly the same as it has over time. People have tried to tweak it this way. They've tried to tweak it that way. But the Bible always keeps coming up as being the most accurate thing that we've ever had in history, I think, anyway. But that's probably more of a personal thing. But I, that, that's what I think anyway. So go do something awesome for God. Click on this one because I reckon, well, I've got way more of these things here. And I've got Contradictory Tuesday that I go through a list of contradictions of the Bible that I people think are contradictions, but they're not. So... Let's investigate. Catch you later.